Hey, if you would please have your seat. We want to be respectful of your time and start promptly at 10 a.m. Thank you all for being here this morning with us. Again, thank you this morning for being here with us. My name is Darius Brown. I have the privilege of serving as the state senator for the second representative uh, Senate district. And uh, it's my privilege and honor to introduce uh, my co-host for today and helping celebrate this great work of Mayor Seals, the Honorable Stephanie T. for terrific Bolden. Let's uh, greet St. Alexander Bolden. Have a day. Have a day. Good morning, everyone. I, I get to speak today because Ted Blunt's not up here. <laughs> it, it is truly um, a pleasure uh, to be here today. I'm hoping that I'm able to get through my little remarks without tears because this has been a terif terrific time in my life and I know as many of you have. So I'm going to read so I don't get too emotional. Uh, I'm elated and proud to be a part of this well-deserved dedication. It was just years ago I had the privilege of naming this bridge after our honoree and now a statue in his honor where you can see from his residence, where he can see from his residence over there, right here and walk across this bridge, see his name, and now see a statue. I just hope you don't try to talk to it. <laughs> Just, a, uh, uh, just one short story, and that is in 1992, when uh, we were all running for office, and finally, uh, the primary election of 1992, which made history with the election of the first African-American mayor for the city of Wilmington. But it was also a time when I had an election as well, and I was running for the second, well, for the first time in, since 1976, for a city council position which was held by Hattie M. Phelan, the first African-American female to serve on city council. So after the election, everybody was just running around and uh, I had forgotten that I won myself because I was running up and down the street saying with everyone and celebrating the election of James Seals Jr. up and down the east side, blowing horns as well as screaming, we won, we won, we won and on a bullhorn until finally my campaign manager said to me, she said, well, do you realize that you won also and that you might want to start thanking people yourself? <laughs> so I was so excited. Uh, this thoughtful but humble, honorable man who lived on the east side of Wilmington, hailing from North Carolina, immediately getting himself involved from places like People's Settlement, Wilmington City Council, the state of Delaware House of Representatives, and finally the first African Amer American mayor in the city of Wilmington. He shared his children and children stand up because they're no longer children, but I'm the same age I was when they were born. So. <laughs> I'll never remember, never forget Mrs. Seals, who uh, at, sang with Sister Sledge at the Christina River Club when it was there. But it was my fundraiser, but she was singing the songs with her, and we enjoyed her so much. It was important to me and the community to have access to our mayor in our neighborhood and living among our neighbors. He would not only take suggestions, but implement them, some of which was little city halls, which we called the satellite stations. Marion T. Academy, the first charter school, which was then Prestige and then the Team Warehouse. The first uh, supermarket that was located at 12th and Hill. The Camera Watch program, which established 10 cameras in highly dr uh, drug neighborhoods. Neighborhood youth workers, first night out, how many remembers First Night Out? Clifford Brown Jazz Festival and National Night Out, and the list goes on and on. And we also had the first 
Mayor's Ball during that time. So we thank you for all those different things, Mayor, uh, and we will always remember and hope we can get some of them back, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> This was and is a man of all seasons who gave me the strength, dedication to do my very best as a community resident, elected official, then and now today. And also three African American mayors that didn't originally live here in the state of Delaware but made it possible for our first native African American mayor, male, Dennis Williams, here in the city of Wilmington. My friends, my brother, I'm your baby sister, okay. Uh, my mayor, I am truly humbled, honored, and tearful appreciation to have the opportunity to publicly give comments here today as again we celebrate this unveiling of your statue. May God continue to bless you now and always. Bless the family and bless all of you who have come out here in support of him today. Thank you. Thanks there. Oh, the other thing, I'm wearing um, black, and gold. black and gold for the mayor, not for Darius. <laughs> I'm so glad our city treasurer wears black and gold. Ain't that right? All right, all right, all right, all right. Good morning, family. This indeed is the day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Allow me to first express my appreciation to the Delaware General Assembly, the Joint Capital Improvement Committee, my Senate staff, Christella St. Just, our sculptor, John Hare, and the city of Wilmington, in particular, Tanya Washington, Tina Betts, Tiffany Christopher, Ian Smith, and Lenny Soffron. In part, we are here today because of two people. State Representative Stephanie T. Bolden, who named this bridge in the honor of Mayor Seals a few years ago, and Norman Oliver, whom for nearly 20 years spent Sunday nights on Channel 28 talking as we all know Norman does at least once a month saying that there should be a statue in honor of Mayor Seals. I committed within myself if there was ever the opportunity and resources in which I controlled that I would make sure that Mayor James Horace Seals Jr. was honored with a statue. <laughs> Although we commissioned this work more than two years ago, in God's wisdom he delayed our plans for his divine time. And today, nearly 30 years later, in 2022, we celebrate the historic 1992 election of Wilmington's first African-American mayor. Now, if you would indulge me for just a minute, not as long as Miss Stephanie, of personal privilege and allow me from a generational perspective to express what Mayor Seals has meant to me and many kids growing up on the east side in the 90s, some who are in attendance today. Mayor Seals gave us an, an, an identity. He was our mayor, he was our neighbor, he was an east sider, and he was a black man. Walking past Compton Square to school in the morning at Bancroft or leaving people's settlement, walking back home in the evening, we would often see him. And we knew he was our mayor. And as Mr. Pritchett and Mr. Boswell often would tell us as kids, he's our mayor. Not only did Mayor Seals give us an identity, but he also gave us exposure. While he was mayor, many of us grew up literally from grade school to graduating from high school and college. And I personally benefited because it seemed like the late Miss Francis Stafford always drafted us for some neighborhood activity. Oh, thank you, Miss Stafford. I think, I think. 
Uh, people settlements seemed to lack for nothing back then. And we had more kids than a roster could fit miraculously. PSA all of a sudden would have two city league basketball teams or two football teams. And this exposure first introduced me also to city government as a high school intern in the police department with Chief Boykin and fire department under Chief James Wilmore, who often, who also taught me to appreciate cologne. <laughs> Some of y'all might not understand that. <laughs> and lastly, Mayor Seals has given me an opportunity. The opportunity while on city council to pay it forward by reaching back. The opportunity with him to work on projects to preserve African American history on the east side. The opportunity to be a doer. The opportunity to have a big idea. The opportunity to improve the lives of young and old alike. And today, the opportunity to honor him. And most importantly, the opportunity to understand why our public service matters. And so if I'm remembered for anything about today, it is my hope that one, like Mayor Seals, that I'm remembered for being a doer, and two, that my work will connect generations to one another, just like Mayor Seals. Thank you. With that, I'd ask that you will all stand for our presentation of colors. As you remain standing, we want to ask the Reverend Christopher Bullock, pastor of the Canaan Baptist Church, to lead us in our invocation. Shall we pray? God, we thank you for this day of celebration to honor your servant, Dr. Seals. We are blessed to be under your sunlight feel the presence of your grace and to know God that your divine hand has made this possible. We thank you God for being a God of peace, a God of power, and a God who makes a way out of no way. In your own time you saw fit that Dr. Seals would be the leader of this city, one who had the people's best interests in mind. Therefore, God, he has earned this honor. He has earned, oh God, this celebration because you have made it possible. Therefore, God, if it be your perfect will, may this celebration be special one that will go down in history that you and only you are the one who made it possible we bless you god because you know how to do all things and even in this you've done it well we bless you god for his faith his membership at the canaan baptist church and all he does oh god in your kingdom to that end, we say glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bullock. You may be seated. I'm going to ask your indulgence this morning because so many people love Mayor Seals and are here to express their appreciation uh, and fondness to him. Also want to recognize at this time our colleagues that may be here from the Delaware General Assembly 
ask any state legislator that is here if you would please stand and wave your hand and be recognized. Thank you, Representative Frank Cook, Representative Nandi Chakocha, and Representative Kendra Johnson for being here. Also want to thank the mayor of the town of Smyrna, Bob Johnson, for being here as well. And uh, Senator Sarah McBride for being here. At this time, I want to ask if Brian McGlinchey would come with a special letter recognizing today, and then we'll have remarks immediately following Brian from our senior U.S. Senator Tom Carper, our Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester, our Governor John C. Carney, our County Executive Matt Meyer, our Mayor Michael Przicki, and our City Council President Trippy Congo. Immediately following President Congo, we'll have a musical selection from the Canaan Baptist Church. And I'd ask in the spirit of readiness that the Canaan Baptist Church be prepared to come after President Congo. Thank you. So Senator Brown is a great man, but he called an audible on me this morning. Um, <laughs> First of all, Mayor Sills, thank you for giving my start in public service. And uh, thank you for showing me what it means to have commitment to the city of Wilmington. And what a beautiful day today. So please acknowledge our mayor one more time and his beautiful family, please. With that, I'd like to turn it over to my third sister, uh, our Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester, who will read the communication from the president and uh, thank you all for being here again this beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And uh, good morning, family, good morning. friends, elected officials, and especially you, Mr. Mayor. It is an honor to be with you. And I have the privilege of yielding a part of my two minutes to the President of the United States. <laughs> Dear Jim, my friend, Congratulations on this well-deserved recognition of your service and trailblazing leadership. Over the 50 years we have known each other, I've seen you give your heart and soul to the people of Wilmington. It truly matters. As a mayor, civic leader, and educator, you have led our beloved community through challenges and triumphs with steady resolve and a steel spine. A true champion of the people, You've always treated everyone with dignity and respect. An unyielding advocate for justice and equality. You've always inspired us to do everything we can to fulfill the promises of America for all Americans. Above all, you have always been about family. Evelyn was a friend to all, and to see you both together was to feel the definition of love. On this day and every day, she is in our hearts. And together, your goodness and grace are reflected in your wonderful children and grandchildren who make this day even more special. Jill and I wish that we could be with you today, but we look forward to seeing your statue the next time that we're down by Brandywine Park. It is a fitting tribute to the power of your example that will inspire generations of leaders to come an example that shows we are a great nation because we are good people of honor and decency like you. We send all our love, Joe. And on a personal note, I, I, I have to say I have known you for over 50 years. Actually, I counted it up as 53, but who's counting? <laughs> and I, I am just so honored and grateful for your presence. Everyone will talk about the different things that you have done, but my family came here in 1969 with my dad working at People's Settlement, and you just embodied true leadership. 
And I remember when, um, after I won my election, my dad gave me his business card, and as a, I don't know what, it just has his name and address on it, but, <laughs> but he wrote on the back, you become what you see, unless you see what you want to become. I am standing here as the first black person, the first woman to represent Delaware in Congress because I saw you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it is my honor now to introduce the senator. I'm going to go to the senator, the great, uh, the great state of Delaware, our senior senator, my friend, my mentor, Tom Carper. Thank you, Lisa. When uh, Lisa was Secretary of uh, Labor and I was the uh, Governor of Delaware, we didn't call her Secretary of Labor. We called her Secretary of Love. She said, give her another round of applause. What a woman, what a woman, what a great leader. Thank you. All these great leaders uh, sitting behind Mayor, I, I just want to say something that uh, I once heard Joe Biden say, and it said, uh, flattery won't hurt you if you don't inhale. <laughs> You're going to get a lot of flattery today. So hold your breath. <laughs> so, some of you know my wife, Martha. We, uh, just before I left the house, uh, Mayor, she said, where are you going? And I said, I'm uh, going uh, into town and going to have an unveiling of a statue of former Mayor Jim Sills. And she says, they're not going to name anything after him, are they? are they? And I said, well, they already have. And they said, well, she said, what's been named after you? I said, nothing. <laughs> She said, how about that combined water sewer overflow under the city of Wilmington? <laughs> it's still there, and it bears my name. You got yourself a bridge, now a statue. This is not right. I've been elected 14 times statewide, nobody, anybody in history, and I have nothing. Ten years ago, we raised uh, $10 million to overhaul the Wilmington train station, make it shine on its 100th anniversary. They named after Joe Biden. <laughs> I get no respect. <laughs> well, you're going to get a lot of it today, my friend. It's great to see Julie. How are you, babe? Nice to see you. I was going nowhere as governor until we hired her. I tell you, you and Evelyn raised three kids that anybody would be proud to, to call their, uh, their own. And uh, when, uh, when I was privileged to be governor, the, the eight years, if I'm not mistaken, you were a mayor for those eight years. And we had an opportunity to work on a bunch of stuff together. Including and Mike Prezik got involved. We hired Mike Prezik to, to to help do the uh, the riverfront, transform to really just an industrial wasteland where uh, nothing, nothing, nobody went there, nobody, nothing grew, nobody lived there. Transformed it into what it is to today. Took a part of Wilmington that was going down, going down, broke, not enough money to put into the, the to anything. And with the help of the legislature and all mayor's uh, guidance and and, uh, and support we transformed in the top banana port in america the port of wilmington let's hear it for the port of wilmington <laughs> one of the things that i re remember jim still saying to me when i was governor he said in order for a delaware to be successful wilmington has to be successful think about that in order for delaware to be successful wilmington has to be successful and uh, he and I worked uh, for eight years together to try to make sure that both the state of Delaware and the city of Wilmington were successful. And they both are successful today, I think far more successful than they otherwise would have been because of his leadership. I, uh, a lot of times I like to quote other people. Uh, today I'm going to quote myself. <laughs> I was looking for something great. To, about, to like a quote and talking about your leadership, Mayor, and I said, why don't I just write something? And maybe this will make me famous too. We'll see. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But it goes something like this. Leaders are humble, not haughty. They have the heart of a servant. They understand that their job is to serve, not to be served. Leaders have the courage to stay out of step when everyone else is marching to the wrong tune. Leaders unite, not divide. They build bridges, not walls. Leaders surround themselves with the best people. 
they can find. And when their team does well, the leader gives the credit to his or her team. When a team falls short, the leader takes the blame. Leaders don't build themselves up by bringing others down. Leaders are aspirational. They appeal to our better angels. As Albert Camus once said that leaders are purveyors of hope. Think about it, purveyors of hope. And he was right. And finally, leaders always seek to do what's right, not what is easy or expedient. Leaders treat other people the way they want to be treated. They focus on excellence in everything they do. If it isn't perfect, let's make it better. And finally, when leaders know they are right, they never, never, never give up. Jim Sills never gave up. It was an inspi inspiration to me and to many that are here and many that have gone on in, in the past. Thank you for being our leader. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being a great inspiration to all of us. Mayor, congratulations. I really did write that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of the two best governors ever to serve the state of Delaware, John Carney. I don't know what he had for breakfast, <laughs> but I want some of that. Well, Senator, you can go home and tell Martha that there's a bridge now that's off the list and a corner where a statue is going to be that's off the list as well. Martha and, and TC seem to be fixated on that. What's, what are they going to name after Tom <laughs> after he goes? Th this is... I'm, I'm afraid to know what he did behind me. I wish y'all could see what I can see in front of me. There's so many wonderful smiling faces that have met, uh, made up our great city and state for, for so many years. It just warms my heart to see Bishop Morton, to see all the members of the clergy, the elected officials, all the leaders, past and present, everybody is in this crowd is so and we're here for a vet that is a long time coming i was looking at the resume of uh, dr sills he came here to delaware in the late 1950s i was born in 1956 i'm 65 do the math this man has lived a long healthy prosperous and successful life. And I just can't think of a better way, a Stephanie T, T for tough in my world, not terrific, tough, than to have this bridge named after Jim and to have a statue of him right here to greet all the folks coming and going. I'm gonna use my two minutes to tell you quickly a, a personal story. Most people don't know that Jim Sills, Dr. Jim Sills, was my thesis, master's thesis advisor at the University of Delaware. John Byrne is laughing out there because I don't know if he knows the story I'm going to tell, but my thesis was delayed. I think every paper that I ever turned in was a little bit late. This one was a couple years late. And Dr. Sills had been elected to the legislature after serving on on city council and doing all the work with uh, Newcastle County Schools, all the different things that he had done. And he was uh, one of my professors in the master's program. So I went to him and I asked him, could you be my thesis advisor? And I thought we were kind of friends, you know, he could move me through pretty quickly and get it done and over with. Where was I wrong about that? <laughs> Does not work that way. Anyway, my, my paper was on something called Title VI which was something, a title in the Civil Rights Act that required formally segregated institutions of higher education to report on an annual basis the number of black and brown students that they admitted to the university, in this case, the University of Delaware. And so I went all through the papers and all the history behind it and, and all of that and documented that in my paper very carefully and I thought, well, 
and I went to, to meet with Dr. Sills. And he went through all of it. I'm not sure he went through all of it. But he got to the end and he said, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? When Jim Sills came to the, to the state of Delaware, he wanted to do something about it. And he wanted to provide the leadership that Senator Carper talked about. And he did just that. He didn't ask for any statues or bridges named after him or anything. And we're here and he's 91 years old, still with us, God bless him. And all he cares about is what we did together for this city and this state. And that's why we're putting that statue up right there to remember him. And that's why Stephanie Terrific Bolden has made it possible for this bridge to be named after him. Sorry, uh, Senator Carper, it's off the list. <laughs> what's clear and what's most lasting is that Dr. Jim Sills inspired many others to do as he did, which is to make a difference. What are you going to do about it? That's the challenge he made to me, I don't know, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever it was. And it made a real difference in my life, as I know it has in so many of yours. Dr. Sills, God bless you. Congratulations after all these years recognized as you should be for somebody who came to Delaware and did something about it. Good morning. It's an honor to be here today. You know, Senator Carper, I, I manage quite a bit of sewage. We might be able to work so it wasn't my intent to announce anything today. But we can quickly uh, arrange something, if you like it. It's very important, very important, as you know. I come here representing over 570,000 Delawareans, the residents of Newcastle County, uh, to honor a man who had an impact on this city, on this county, on this state that's really greater than words can express. Uh, but for me, it's also very personal. This is Delaware. He was not my master thesis advisor, but in 1989, when I was a page in the Delaware State Legislature, I had a lot of bosses, one of whom was Mark Brainerd, now the president of Delaware Tech. And two of my bosses were Representative Rourke Moore and Representative Jim Sills. And the Delaware State House then looked very different than it looks today. It was a state house that was in no way represented representative of the diversity of our state. And for years, there were only two black members of our state house, and it really turned into the honor of my life to have an opportunity to see Rourke Moore and Jim Sills operate in that environment. I remember Representative Seals, I'm sure he doesn't remember, said to me in another page, this is decades ago, something like, there are people who I sit in this room with every day, Democrats and Republicans, who are educated in the world of Jim Crow, who when they look at me, they don't see a state representative on the same footing as them. And yet he did what we've later learned to be, if they go low, we go high. I, I, I never saw Representative Sills or Representative Moore disrespect any of their colleagues, even while their very humanity was being disrespected. And while managing to show respect 
Everyone in that house knew there was a fire, a serious fire within. That wasn't just about dollars and getting a job, but it was about building wealth and careers. I once heard that President Obama had a unique ability to inspire PhDs and President Bush had a unique ability to inspire people with less education, with high school educations. And as I think about that, Representative Seals, Mayor Seals, had an ability to inspire everyone. To sit in a room of the highest educated and talk the very specifics of policy about wealth building as a University of Delaware professor. And he had the ability to go in neighborhoods of Wilmington and across our state and speak to people in a way that elected officials don't normally speak to people. So it's truly an honor to be here today. I'm humbled to have a seat on this stage and to know and to pray and to hope that many years from now, when children and families walk past this, past this statue, maybe they'll look up Jim Sills. Maybe they'll read the plaque. Maybe they'll learn a little bit, take a little bit from that, that we can use to make our city, our county, and state a little stronger and a little better. Thank you. Thank you, Matt, for that introduction. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, uh, you all can see Tom Carper perform at the Queen on Saturdays. <clears throat> you get there before six, you don't have to pay the cover charge. I saw uh, Darius yesterday, Senator Brown, and we talked about uh, this number of speakers here today he said a uh, mayor remembered that brevity is a virtue and so i kept that in mind as i put together my remarks but first let me thank the family so much for allowing us to be part of this magnificent uh, day there are truly few days there are few days that are so heartwarming as this one is when we do lots of things but this one's very very special um, and I want to thank on behalf of my staff, Tanny Washington, John Rago, everybody worked so hard to make this a success. And my, official, my official duty is to convey to the mayor, people have been saying mayor all day, and I snap my head around and they're not talking to me. Um, yeah, the, to convey to the mayor the respect and more importantly, the warmest affection that the people of this city have for this remarkable man and his great legacy. I, that's, that's my official job here. Uh, the, the mayor and I have known one another for 25 years, 26 years, something like that. All through the riverfront years where he served on the board and he let us know what he wanted to see happen and the MBNA years, which people forget, that was a remarkable time when Jim, Jim was a part of rebuilding uh, the, the great growth in the downtown as well. <clears throat> what people forget is all the prosperity that we have today started when Jim was mayor. Loma in the downtown. <clears throat> Everybody remembers the guy who cut the ribbon, but they for forget the guy who laid the foundation. And the foundation for all the growth that has happened in this city, I'm telling you, happened in the 90s when Jim Sills was mayor. And I'm so happy to say that. Uh, but it's funny, my, if you ask me to remember, give remembrance of Jim Sills, I would say that while he was happy to bask in the prosperity of those big projects, you always knew that all he thought about were the dispossessed. All he cared about the people were the people who were forgotten. And that was a constant theme of my relationship with Jim. I have a special respect for Jim's accomplishments because only I and a few other people living know how truly difficult the task of being the mayor can be. Jim, it's not gotten any easier. People still complain often about everything. 
City council is still a handful. Not you, Chip. No, no, no. I'm not, talk I'm not talking about you guys. Yolanda, we're cool. Don't worry about it. It's the other guys. Um, let me just finish by saying this. Uh, I've spent a lifetime worrying about my resume. I'm now spending time thinking about what they're going to say in my eulogy. My friend, lucky for you, there's no mystery. These same friends and supporters have said it all today. You are respected. Your life has had value. You will be remembered. Most import important of all, you are loved. The Italians always say, the Italians have a way of always saying Chendan, Chendani. That means 100 years. But most of them have no, no expectation they're going to reach 100. Jim, you're going to reach 100. Godspeed. <laughs> And now, my good friend, <laughs> my very good friend, capable leader of our city council, Trippy Congo. Good morning, everybody. What, what an honor. I wait for the um, officers to, to pass us. What, what an honor to be here among so many community leaders and political leaders. And, and Julie, when you first reached out and asked could I just say a few words, it really triggered a series of memories that I've never really said out loud, that I've never really shared with anyone. But your father, uh, Mayor Seals, he was my first introduction to local politics. When he was running, my dad was running around town. And I remember being with my father in the car. He was just trying to champion your father, Mayor, and you, Mayor Sills, and trying to let everyone know how important it, it was for the city to elect him as mayor. And then, you know, fast forward 20 years later, when I became involved in politics. I would see your father and I would see you, Mayor Sales, and, and I was in awe because you were like a superhero to me, honestly. You know, being in politics, I saw people, my colleagues, I saw them as regular people, but I didn't, but Mayor Seals, Seals I saw you as a, as a notch above all of us. And it was because of your work that you, like the foundation that Mayor Przicki just talked about, and the hope that you gave so many people here in this city. And I, I, I think we have to pause to thank Senator Darius Brown, because he was extremely humble. I don't, I don't think I've ever said that about Darius. <laughs> but he was extremely humble in leaving himself out of the team that put this together. And, and Stephanie T, the T is for talkative on um, Bowden. Let's just give them a round of applause. And when I would see you, when I would see you, Mayor Seals, I would see you walking around town. I remember the first time when I when I was when I finally got involved in politics, you said, "Hey, Congo." And I was like, "Yes, he knows who I am." <laughs> and then when I was fortunate and, and blessed enough to become the, the president of city council, he called the office and asked for to to meet with me. And I'm sitting there like, oh my goodness, what does, what does he want to talk about? And he was still championing, championing for, for our people, for our city. He hasn't stopped. He's 90 years old and is still fighting for the city of Wilmington and still fighting for African Americans. And when, when he came and talked to me, he said, Trippy, I need you to, I need you to be on board with this. He was like, okay, and I'm thinking, is this a trick question? <laughs> like, of course, <laughs> how can I tell this man no to anything? But Mayor, just thank you for, again, just planting the seed for so many of us on this stage, like Darius mentioned earlier. And when you became Mayor, you, you, you realized that representation matters. So you brought other black capable leaders with you. You appointed people who, who's, children in our city could see themselves in. And that was extremely important. So I just look forward to, honestly, I want a statue now. 
and, and, and not just to have a statue, you can put it at the bottom of the Brandywine, honestly. <laughs> but I want to be as impactful and as relevant as Mayor Sills. I just want to be in a conversation with him, so thank you so much. And before I go, I just want to acknowledge my, my council colleagues, uh, Councilman James Padola, Councilwoman Maria Cabrera, I think I saw her, her. Uh, Councilwoman Michelle Harley, and Councilwoman, yeah, please stand, Councilwoman Yolanda McCoy, and former, uh, former President of City Council Hanifa Shabazz, and the godfather of City Council, Ted Blunt. Thank you, everyone.
Let the church say amen. 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 Thank you to all of our elected officials, con congressional delegation, governor, county executive, mayor, council president. At this time, we're going to ask that our lieutenant governor will come with remarks. Following our lieutenant governor will be Dan Rich, the former dean of the Biden School. Dr. Tony Allen, President of Delaware State University, Rashmi Rangan, Executive Director of DCRAT, Dr. Bill Bazell from the Wilmington Chapter of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, Michael Duvall, the Executive Director of Boys and Men of Color for the YMCA. Uh, and after that, we will hear from the Chief Executive President of MNF Bank, uh, James H. Seals III. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, I have the honor and privilege of attending often the Canaan services. Was that not moving and wonderful? And to you, Dr. Sills, and to our incredible Reverend Pastor Bullock, um, and to all of those here at Faith Community, during these past years, we've had some challenges. And Dr. Sills, colleague of mine at the University of Delaware, uh, came along a little after, uh, a little later after you had started, um, is a man who leads by the biblical beings of too much is given, much is expected. And we really appreciate being with you today. I will be very succinct. I was honored to be added onto the program. As those of the electeds know, sometimes we're supposed to be in 20 places at once. I did not want to miss today. Dr. Dan Rich, who will be speaking in a moment for Dr. Maria, will share with you a story, a private story. I had the opportunity as a professor, a young professor, I'd just gotten tenure in the year 2000, and I said to my mentor, Dr. Rich, at that time, who is one of my bosses, I'm not only a nurse, but also teach in the Urban Affairs Public Policy Program, is it a possibility for one to teach and serve and also run for office. Dr. Sill, you were a role model to me and to so many others. And as everyone has echoed, we each have a story. And to see you do that, you were a gentleman, a man that I saw be successful and balanced at as a career. And so to you, sir, thank you for being a role model. But most importantly, to the children, to this community, and to the remarkable family, uh, it is an honor to be here, and we cannot wait to see this incredible monument that will last in perpetuity and will be an emblem to all of us to do what is right, to live your legacy. And again, thank you to the planning committee, to our senator, to my incredible, terrific Stephanie T. Bolden and everyone here. We look forward to this moment. And in case you missed it, during the service, our senator did put on Lisa's glasses to look like President Biden. It hasn't worked yet. Uh, if you see those glasses, he's hoping that maybe if he looks like the president, it might just happen. But in sincerity, thank you, and thank you to the committee and for this wonderful day and for being a role model to all of us in academia as well as here in the city of Wilmington. Thank you. Well, good morning. I'm Dan Rich and uh, proud to be a friend of Jim Sills. Uh, and I bring you greetings, Jim, from Maria Aristigata, how to be out of Delaware today, but congratulate you on all you've done for me. It's an honor uh, to recognize someone I've uh, known for half a century, work with a little different context than uh, some of you. So before he was Mayor Sills, as you've heard from the governor, he was Professor Sills. Actually, he's still Professor Sills. He's still Professor Emeritus James Sills of the Biden School of Public Policy and Administration of the University of Delaware. And we are so proud that that's uh, the case. Uh, he, uh, he joined uh, UD in 1972. He, uh, he started something called the Urban Agent 
program. First program in the country of its kind. It's to bring the university into the community and bring to bear the capacity of the university to improve the lives of the people in the community. And we turn to Jim Sills to do that, and he led that program, and he developed that program through his own determination that he would be a different kind of professor. He was no ivory tower professor. No ivory tower professor. And as you heard from the, from the governor, he expected that his students would learn, right, to follow that example, right, to take what they learned, right, in the classroom and to bring it out into the community to improve the lives of the people. He did it, uh, and he did it well. Well, the issue was uh, fair housing or community development or environmental justice. Uh, Jim Sells uh, was the advocate for the people. He was doing that was a professor even before he was in public service life as a uh, mayor. Uh, I, uh, uh, I know that in a lot of ways, uh, Jim is the epitome of uh, the connection between the world ideas and the world action. And you heard it uh, from, uh, from the governor and others. He's committed uh, really to making a difference. I got a, uh, a, um, a note literally just a couple of days ago from one of his long-term colleagues who happens to be here, John Byrne. And uh, he wrote to me, the note, note was entitled, Why Jim Sills is One of My Heroes. He said, Jim Sills, he said, is all about speaking truth to power. Jim Sills is all about doing so on behalf of those who otherwise might not be heard. So all, all I know is that Jim was doing that for a long, long time. When he became mayor, he uh, strengthened the partnership with the uh, uh, with the university. We had a Wilmington Community Development uh, Partnership. And I, and I just want to share with you uh, that the programs that Jim established starting in 72, reinforced when he was mayor, 92 and beyond, right, are still in place and still in Wilmington and still in the neighborhoods uh, that he worked in. And that's part of Jim Sills' legacy that the university is still here making that commitment. So, uh, so Professor Sills, I just want to say um, Jim, that uh, I was thinking as others were speaking, I don't know any other University of Delaware professor who has a statue. <laughs> so I'm hoping that when the UD people come by here, right, they'll say it's Professor Sells. So just a couple of things. I, I just want to share, when, when Jim uh, was working full time at the university, uh, he had a real impact, uh, and he had a lot of ways because he had the same humble, quiet determination in what he did there as he does in all the ways you know uh, him. Uh, he, uh, he helped uh, uh, strengthen diversity and inclusion at the institution, and he did it the same way he does everything else. He simply went out, right, he recruited students, he brought them in, he mentored them, he helped them graduate, right, he helped them get out and make lives and, and go to work on their own and make a difference in the world. That's still, a lot of those students, some of them are on the platform, you know, as you know this, right? So th this difference carries on generation to generation. Um, Jim had another uh, important role. He, he pushed the university really hard uh, to value public service much more uh, than it had before, to value it and recognize it uh, for its faculty and for its students, to recognize that that was the the key. And so we're very proud. We have the James H. Sills uh, Scholarship in the Biden School, and we give that every year to a, a student to follow up on the kind of work that uh, Jim does. But I want to tell you that uh, just a couple of years ago, Jim, uh, the university faculty senate, uh, as they will do, had this great idea, and that was to give awards for excellence in public service and, and community service uh, to faculty and, and students, and that's a wonderful thing. I just want you all to know uh, that I heard that idea from Jim Sills a half century ago. So Jim Sills is a professor emeritus at the Biden School. We're proud of it, and his ideas are still making a difference. So I, I will look at uh, that statue and see uh, a wonderful human being, uh, Mayor Sills, Professor Jim Sills.
Oh. And to my good friend, President of Delaware State University, Tony Allen. Good morning. There's been a lot of talk about the University of Delaware here this morning. But I'm the proud president of Delaware State University. And perhaps more importantly, that's a Morehouse man. And another Morehouse man stood in Oslo, Norway in 1964 and said, I refuse to accept the isness of a man's present nature that makes him morally incapable of reaching up toward the oughtness that forever confronts him. I'll say that again. I refuse to accept the isness of a man's present nature that makes him morally incapable of reaching up toward the oughtness that forever confronts him. Mayor Sills is oughtness. Dr. Sills is oughtness. In 1992, I was a fifth year senior <laughs> at the University of Delaware. But I remember the election of Jim Sills and what that meant to so many young, aspiring black men throughout this state. And he was a quiet storm. I know y'all, some of y'all remember WDAS, they used to have the quiet storm. He was a quiet storm. But he worked specifically for the voiceless. You heard Mayor Przicki talk about all the growth that has happened in this city since his leadership. But Mayor Sills worked specifically for the voiceless. That mattered to me. So much so that I had the opportunity to help found Public Allies Delaware in 1995. One of the first people I talked to was Mayor Jim Sills. He asked a couple of questions, was very clear with respect to his expectations of me and the people that will be coming through that program that program is still alive and well, has served 2,000 young leaders in this community, serving more than 2 million public service hours. In 1998, Renee Dijon, who many of you know, came to Mayor Sills and said, we need to start the Urban League in Wilmington. As the story goes, I wasn't in the room, Mayor Sills, said, I agree with that. Who would be the flag bearer? He immediately called Jim Gilliam, one of my great mentors. That program is still up and running, being a voice for the voiceless. On a personal note, I think many of you know, my mother recently passed and I didn't have a real father figure except for Jim Gilliam in my life who was very much present in my life. But I can tell you it's not always about the folks that are with you every day. It's about those folks you can see as examples. Mayor Sills was an example to me. You heard that he was at the College of Urban Affairs and Public Policy at University of Delaware. The reason I was able to get in the College of Urban Affairs and Public Policy <laughs> was because of Tim Barnacoff and Dan Rich. The reason I wanted to be there was because of Jim Sills. And I'm proud to say that I'm the first African-American male to ever graduate with my doctorate from that program because of Jim Sills' example. Your oughtness is clear. Your oughtness is compelling. And while I haven't said it publicly before, I just want to thank you personally for what you have meant to me, what your example is, and know that as I think about Delaware State University literally every day, Jim Gilliam sits on my wall and you sit in my heart, good brother. God bless you. Now the incomparable Rashmi. Right? 
a good glorious morning to all of you. I'm following Tony, bear with me. Special congratulations to Julie, Mark, Jim, and our guest of honor, Professor, Dr. Mayor, and my mentor, James H. Sills, Jr. It is all about you today. As we celebrate your contributions to Delaware, I'm here to speak about his impact on Delaware through a tiny little nonprofit he founded in 1987, the Delaware Community Reinvestment Action Council. I came to America and of all places in America to Newark, Delaware, close enough, in 1988. 1989, a student at now the illustrious Biden Institute, I was actually ready to drop out because I couldn't afford to put food on the table. And JB there is the reason I stood outside Professor Jinsel's office for a couple of hours waiting for him. My first meeting, I remember nothing except the empathy. He made me feel I belonged. And that was within a year of coming to the United States. And that feeling of belonging is our corporate culture at DCRAC. Anyone who has come in, including our banks, some of them might say, yeah, we belong. As mayor, we often found ourselves at bank merger hearings on opposite sides. And once somebody said, well, if the founder of DCREC is supporting, then the merger couldn't be bad. And the mayor says, now look here. If I was in that seat, I would be opposing. What a confidence booster to a novice advocate. I was in that job only a year by then. All the lessons that I've learned as him being my mentor is what DCREC is today. So let me talk about three lessons. Lesson number one, communities are hit hardest when institutions don't exist, especially those that the affluent like me can take for granted. This is why DCREC banks the unbanked, saving an average member $3,000 a year. The second largest anti-poverty program, second only to the earned income tax credit, which by the way, IRS audits a low income tax return five times more often than not. And that is when DCREC's free tax attorney is available for our community. We are building a law firm to represent those who can't avail the free service but can't afford market rates. We run the money school and we continue our advocacy. Lesson number two. You all heard about it. Inaction is oppression. When there is a need, no one is willing or able to meet that need. We all suffer. This is why DCREC law works to stem wealth erosion for the two certainties in our life, death and taxes. I already talked about taxes. The impact of these certainties on low-income communities especially communities of color, is the difference between poverty and wealth. We also chartered a financial institution in 2011, the only charter issued in entire United States by our federal government. It is on Church Street, Stepping Stones Community Federal Credit Union. If you don't know about it, now you do go and patronize it. We now have an infrastructure. 
to address racial wealth divide. Lesson number three, when you find the secret sauce, as we think we have, be sure it survives you. DCRAC has launched a five million equity capital campaign to advance economic liberty and financial independence. Our goal is to ensure Stepping Stones Community Federal Credit Union celebrates a 100th, 200th, 500th birthday. This is the legacy Jim Sills helped build and one that I am deeply fortunate to continue. When you gave me the opportunity to intern with you, neither of us knew the impact of your influence. DCREC is who it is today because I learned as a newcomer the harsh lessons of systemic racism from someone who saw it every day and made it his calling to do something about it. Thank you so much. And Dr. William, next. It's absolutely my pleasure to speak about my fraternity brother, my friend, my mentor, Dr. James H. Sills, Jr. I moved to Delaware as a country boy from rural Arkansas with no real city experience in the mid-late 60s. The only city experience I had was while I was studying at the university. As a member of Cap Alpha Psi fraternity, I joined the local chapter here and learned that there were some members who were trying to make a difference in the community. Dr. Sills was one of those leaders. He was very active in the fraternity and exemplified the kind of person that I was taught to align myself with. That is someone that is a leader, willing to share experiences and knowledge and make a better person of me as well as try to make a better person of others. Working on his campaign for city council back in the 60s enabled me to really learn to know my brother Jim Sills. He taught me about what serving the community was all about. It's not about the fame you gain, but more importantly, how many persons' lives you help to improve. Jim continually worked to make his fraternity a leader in the community for change. He made sure we remembered our focus as alumni members, which is to give back. The fundamental purpose of Cap Alpha Psi is achievement in every field of human endeavor. We work hard to ensure that we can reach out and help youth. Our key focus is on youth. Jim is a shining example of carrying out that fundamental purpose. He not only worked to personally reach the highest levels, as you've heard, he has continued to work with others to help them along the way during his journey. When we were working to create a facility in the east side of Wilmington as a focal point for our youth development activities, Brother Sills was instrumental in creating the Achievement Center. In fact, he opened his home for our meetings and was always there to provide guidance and support for the activities we were trying to get done. His input was crucial in making the facility a reality. As you've heard, as a professor at the University of Delaware, he's always worked with the, the students there. He also worked with the fraternity members that were at the University of Delaware as well and helped to make them better persons, such as Dr. Tony Allen. He mentored several very other community leaders as well. I'm going to keep mine short, but personally I want to say this. Jim has always been there for me. Whenever I call, even during the time he was mayor, he would respond either then or call me back within a few hours. He was never too busy to help me with any issue that I had and give me his guidance, which is always excellent. Therefore, I say to my friend and fraternity brother and mentor, you deserve this honor. As you've heard, he's a great man, and I can't do any say or do any more to say how great it is to know this wonderful person for over 50 years. Brother Seals, thank you.
Well, good morning, Wilmington. Good morning, Wilmington. I am uh, grateful to be here on the stop. I uh, was in Atlanta and Boston this week, and so when uh, um, I had an opportunity to come here, of course I would. Uh, Julie uh, did a wonderful thing. I'm here representing the National Office of the YMCA of the USA, and uh, my job is to improve the outcomes for boys and young men of color nationwide. So this is an Ubuntu moment. <laughs> I am because you are, uh, brother. So thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, I actually met Mr. Sills here in the mid-1990s. I was uh, invited, um, for Jack Booker invited us. We had a national meeting here uh, for African Americans around the country. And so I had the opportunity to have met him uh, once before. The Walnut Street Y, as you may know, is one of 84 black Ys uh, that were developed across the country since um, 1853. Uh, they were, thank you. <laughs> Uh, 1853 was our first African-American YMCA in Washington, D.C., and there were 84, and uh, you are one of the legacy YMCAs that uh, we honor. And so uh, our goal uh, for us here nationally is to get to 100 cities to improve those outcomes for 10,000-plus boys. And um, this is quite a moment. Uh, we uh, I called Julie and asked who was uh, the executive director of the Walnut Street YMCA when uh, Dr. Sills was there, and he said, James Redmond. And so I said, we're going to look for more James Redmonds uh, because obviously James Redmond has produced uh, and nurtured a, a beautiful environment here on east side of um, Wilmington. Uh, I uh, actually live in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, so I uh, <laughs> I'm on my way back there uh, a little bit later uh, today, and I am also a member of the uh, Divine Nine. So I'm an Omega man, but I'm grateful to be here with other uh, yes right brother thank you uh, I know there are a few of us out here in the crowd um, and so I love I know that the world is full of um, uh, connections and um, I have a tendency to look for the light and uh, you can see the light uh, in the Sills family so God has a way also of increasing faith uh, and the um, who's coming behind me to speak I actually um, am also the chair of the local my brother's keeper Charlotte Mecklenburg um, chapter and we bank <laughs> with m and f and so i didn't make the connection until i was talking to julie and i said sills and sills is your brother <laughs> and so we uh i met uh, brother sills uh, we uh we bank and invest uh through m and f and so the, you know this is a, a time when the world is there's no coincidences so i was grateful to uh to to uh, be invited and uh, to attend on our behalf uh, knowing that some of the uh, history I say um, with Eastside Pride, uh, Mark, Julie, and uh, James are uh, beautiful gifts that you and your wife left um, for the world. This is a transformational moment. I think parenting is the ultimate of transformation, and uh, they too are building stronger communities in the world, and so we are grateful also for the children.
it's so great to just see all of your faces sitting in those seats. Um, I am so proud. My family and I are so proud. We have um, family from 10 different states that are here today. So they have come out to support this great person. Uh, we have heard a lot of accolades, a lot of stories, a lot of tributes, uh, a lot of good jokes from uh, Governor Carp.